the traitorous Caldwell family's residence loomed into view. Against the horizon, it looked suitably sinister. Yet the manor had changed since Meave last saw it. Two new wings, ornate towers, a grand colonnade. And the windows now glistened with stained glass, the gilded hue of imperial suns. We must pay them a visit, seethed the queen. The great double doors opened with an echoing thud. Just inside them stood the heir to the estate, Dragomir, his wife and three children by his side, and Helena, the treacherous Count's widow. Sliding the cap from his head, thus giving proof of the family's hereditary baldness, Dragomir knelt down upon one knee. Your Grace, my father's betrayal stands beyond doubt and exoneration, the young Caldwell said flawlessly and in a single breath as if he'd practiced a dozen times. And his death at your hands was most well deserved. I beseech you to lay your trust in Prince Willem. He'll confirm and you nout of my father's plans. I humbly ask that you not punish me for his sins. Allow me to stay on my ancestral lands, to serve faithfully as your loyal subject. I believe not a word slithering out of his mouth, whispered Reynard. The first chance he gets to stab you in the back, he will take. Convenient to make this request now, don't you think? Why not earlier? Meave asked, crossing her arms and raising her chin. It would have behooved you to send a messenger once I'd crossed into Rivia. Uh preferred to speak to you directly, Your Grace, for... For you held out hope. Hope that the Blackclads would yet defeat me. You stood on their side till the last. No. The Coldwells I trusted once, but I shan't make that error again. You've one day to pack your chattels and go. Leave my country. Dragomir rose from his knee and shook out the cap he'd crushed in supplication. Only ever as a corpse, Your Majesty. He hissed his vulnerable demeanor gone in a flash. If you'll not take me for your vassal, you must take me as your foe. Men, to arms! At this sign, armed men rushed from the house while archers appeared atop the roof. Clearly, Dragomir had expected to be refused. You'll not destroy my family! I won't allow it! Father! was right about you. Dragomir lay in the courtyard of his extravagant manor. With the last of his strength, he clawed at the colored gravel. He resembled an insect that was hurt, damaged, yet pulled itself along as if it could somehow escape death. The Queen knelt beside him and gazed into his clouded eyes. I want you to know your family will be looked after. You've relatives in Kedwin. They'll be sent there, properly escorted, with the proper stipend. Dragomir wished to say something, but choked on his own blood. He was dead a moment later. The Queen slowly stood and gave the order to march. She rode at the front of the column, deep in thought. Meave narrowed her eyes and gazed at Dragomir. Large drops of sweat dripped from his brow. You may stay, said the Queen, finally breaking the silence. On two conditions. Firstly, you will make a considerable donation toward the war effort. Then field an infantry regiment, fully outfitted, under my command. Naturally, Your Grace. And the other? In one swift motion, Meave snatched a crossbow from a soldier, put it to her cheek, and loosed. Caldwell the Younger screamed bloody murder as he threw up his arms to shield his face. The bolt hissed by and struck the center of a golden sun, shattering one of the stained glass windows. Redecorate, said the Queen flatly. She then mounted up and sped off, earnestly hoping she'd not come to regret her generosity. I shall replace the glazing in the windows to bear Rivian diamonds. A glazier I've already sent for. My father was wrong about you. And even more wrong about Nilfgaard. I shan't let you down, Your Majesty. I shall stand by your side until victory's achieved. Again, many thanks, Your Grace. And this, may it serve as proof of my loyalty. 
When Meave saw Reynard's usually stoic visage rent by a half-moon grin, she knew he brought particularly good news. Your Grace, our toil has borne fruit. The liberated towns of Rivia have hired an outfit of mercenaries conveyed to your command, along with wishes for a speedy victory. Meave cast an eye over the long column of hired soldiers, taking in their top-notch arms and battle-hardened faces. Her gaze lingered longer on their banners, surprised to see some bearing the Caldwell crest, suggesting Dragomir had proven worthy of the trust she had extended him. With support like this to bolster our ranks, our way grows easier, said the Queen with a smile. Send the townsmen a letter. Say their Queen thanks them for their devotion to the realm, and when the time comes, she shall reward them fittingly. 